Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks to the organizers for a brilliant conference. And this actually is my talk. My name is Sennikem Jakob, so everything seems to fit. And so I'm going to talk about a bit experience and what we learned from community curation in the SARS-CoV-2 times in, from a React Home perspective. So React Home is a pathways database. We go from literature, piles of literature, to what we call computationally accessible pathway reviews, which also at the high levels of the pathway hierarchy have attractive um, visual representation, but then go down to the detailed molecular maps of the pathways. We do curation in a very similar way to reviews. So we recruit external domain experts who work with the curators to get the data representation right, and then reviewers to make sure that we don't represent the view of only one group or one person. And as you can imagine, this is a fairly laborious process which depends a lot on voluntary contributors, namely the domain experts and reviewers. We normally curate what we call a generic cell, which human cell, which has more or less all the possible pathways um, in human, but we also increasingly do um, disease curation and point out what is specific in a certain disease. And we do this in a number of principal ways. The first way of disease annotation is loss of function. A protein, an enzyme typically is broken, um, very often in metabolic, metabolic disease. And then the phenotype is caused by missing end product or accumulating pre-product of this broken um, reaction. And then in nice cases like this one, we can then also annotate how a certain drug mechanistically fixes the problem and leads to um, getting rid of the disease phenotype. It doesn't always work like this. Mostly we, st we have to stop at how the disease works, but there are nice cases like this. So this is um, loss of function. Um, we can also um, overlay binary data onto our, all of our annotation, whether it's protein interactions or in this case, I'm showing an overlay of uh, disease associations from DisGenet, which you can have for any annotated entity in Reactome. Um, the second type of annotation is gain of function. Some receptor is constitutionally active, for example, and then a whole slew of reactions which shouldn't happen are taking place, typically in cancer, and then we add all of these to the normal pathway uh, marked in red and annotated as a disease pathway. And the version I'm going to focus here is host pathogen disease uh, interaction, where again we mark the host um, proteins or other molecular entities and the reactions that uh, they involve in red to make the distinction to sorry, the pathogen is in red, um, to make the distinction to the host um, reactions. We annotate usually only the interface between the two. We don't try to annotate everything in the pathogen that would simply not be feasible from a curation effort point of view. And so this is what we did in the SARS-CoV-2 situation. And like for all of us, the challenge was little to no experimental support for what we really wanted to express. Literature was appearing at a very fast rate, not necessary or usually not peer-reviewed, very compressed timelines. We had to show something for the next release, and there was a general lack of experts in the field. Many of us um, experienced the same challenges. Um, one thing, one strategy we use within Reactome is we adopted a method we had before. We do authology-based projections from human, which we curate, to a range of model organisms to provide annotation also for these. This is clearly marked as authology-based inference. And then we adjusted this approach to project from SARS-CoV-1 uh, to SARS-CoV-2 as a quick fix to have a sort of skeleton pathway. And then we filled in the gaps as 
additional hard data appeared in the literature. And we didn't do this alone. There was a great collaboration in the context of the Disease Maps Consortium, where many projects around systems biology um, worked together to, and this was critical, to pool the expertise. The lacking point was not software platform, it was not even curators, it was really the domain experts which were the limiting factor and through working together in this uh, project in the context of the disease maps with dozens and ultimately more than 200 people really helped to address the challenge of getting information in a controlled way out, getting it curated. It went into all our resources, but it was harmonized and it was coordinated between the resources. And this went from literature triaging and markup to really building a complex workflow where we could go, let's say, from reactome annotation all the way via multiple steps to logic models. We plugged the gaps in the information flow and it was a really nice collaboration which got out improvements to the Minerva platform, Reactome, Wikipathways, everybody involved. And it was really helpful to, for everybody to work together. And it got a set of papers with around 200 co-authors. So, what have we learned from the, for the future? A, as I mentioned, we have plugged gaps in logic workflows, how to convert between different representations. We are working together among projects, um, but we also, in the reactome side now, we are preparing to do this in a kind of um, preparedness context for the next pandemic, and we are trying to curate reference species, refer reference pathogens, for example, influenza, H1N1, to be ready for the next challenge um, where we then can project to whatever this challenge might be. Of course, we can't cover everything, but we try to cover good reference um, species so that we can react fast in the next challenging situation. I don't quite understand the timer, so I have still six minutes left. It's sort of... It's... Anyway, I'm... I'm basically done anyway, so I'll just... <laughs> That's okay. So, so, I would like to acknowledge in particular Mark Yespi, who should have presented here from the Reactome team and who couldn't make it for health reasons. Um, he provided also some of the slides. And from the Disease Maps Consortium, Marek and Anna, who were really driving this, and many other participants, and of course, all the contributors from Reactome, the funders who made all of this possible, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. So, yeah, it was, you, you still have time. So, is it time for questions? Chris. Oh, oh well, yes. good. Work. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good. Um, it's good. We were, we were doing some curation of SARS-CoV-2 protease inhibitors in the, uh, in the guide to pharmacology. Um, so how do you, uh, given for all of us by curation, quali experimental quality of the papers decide to curate? This is particularly acute in the uh, onslaught of SARS-CoV-2 papers. So how did you decide what papers not to curate? Um. This was where there was no hard and fast criteria. It's not like we said, okay, this is the set of journals, or so, and especially as it was all preprint. And so it was really in the sort of triaging group where it was decided what goes into the curation pipeline and what doesn't. And it was a subjective decision, but it was a, sub a subjective decision which was done by a group of people, by people from more than one resource, rather than just one person saying, eh, I think it should be this one and not this one. So we did the best which thought. 
I'm sure, uh, I don't have the metrics, and definitely not, perhaps we can find them, but I don't have them here. Um, but just from my recollection, and it's clear it was only a fraction of the papers which we could have curated, which were curated. So it was definitely nowhere near even half. That I'm pretty sure of, but I can't give you the correct metrics right now. Okay. Yeah, I have one question. Yes. What if the next pandemic is uh, anti uh, is a uh, antibiotic resistant microbe? Are you ready? <laughs> well, as ready uh, or probably not as ready as we would want to be. That's why I said we try to s select a good set of representative species, yeah. and we have a number of pathogens, also microbial pathogens, mm -hmm. where, again, we don't curate the entire, entire pathogen, let's say, metabolism or so, and there's other databases who do that better, mm -hmm. but we do curate what happens at the interface between pathogen and human, and we hope that whatever it is, we have something close by, which we can then use as, sorry, as a um, projection framework in the same work as we did from SARS-CoV-1 where there was reasonable hard data to SARS-CoV-2, but it might be something completely different. You can only be, that's the, the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns and so on, so we can only be as prepared as possible. Thank you. Thank you.